If you think, who, which are the most stable nations in the world, would you say, roughly speaking? Certainly not the Europeans, certainly not America, certainly not China, certainly not India, certainly not, certainly not, certainly not, you know, you, you think there's nobody. Well, there's almost nobody. But there are a few Scandinavian countries like Norway, Sweden, Finland, for example, which are relatively speaking in the world very stable. Why are they stable? Why are they stable? They're not the richest countries in the world, so how come? They don't have very rich people or very poor people. That's why they're stable because they don't have very rich and very poor. Where you have rich people and poor people, you have antagonism, you have injustice, and you have the results of that, which are war, social war, crime, the taking of drugs, and all the iniquities of, of the present life in the great nations of the world. They're all the same, that because of the injustices, the divisions created by the capitalism, socialism. Now, what the master says, what Maitreya says is, the economy is very simple. If you have a cart, you know a cart needs two wheels to go. Yeah, then it will go. Cart on one, a wheel on one side, wheel on the other side, you can pull it, it will go. But if you have only one wheel, it won't go. No cart will go with one wheel. Whether that wheel is, is uh, socialism or is capitalism. Now, what do you think is the percentage of usage of capitalism in America? vis-a-vis -vis socialism. I'll tell you. It's take too long to think up. <laughs> this country, USA, is 95% capitalist and 5% socialist. You say, you didn't even know it was 5% socialist. <laughs> well, it, it, it is. It really is, surprisingly. It is. It's very generous when it has to be. The government subsidizes certain of its industries to make sure that they don't just disappear as industries and the people are totally without work. They've allowed this to happen very much and they, out, they sent out their, their actual creative process of their goods to other countries, to poor countries where there's cheap labor and so on. So that there's a tremendous lessening of the faculty of the industry of this country. It's not industry, it's just book work. The industry is elsewhere, you just keep the books. That's where you need the lawyers and the bookkeepers, and they run America. And America has that 5% of socialistic ideas in its structure, 95% capitalist. Take a country, and this is true for most of the countries, you know, Britain and France, Germany, they're not quite so, they'd be about 80% capitalist to 20% socialist. It varies slightly from country to country, but that's about it. Japan is about 90% uh, capitalist to 10% socialist. Today, Russia, Russia changes so fast you can't keep up with it, but this time yesterday, Russia was about coming on for 90% capitalist and about 10% socialist. 
that you now have more billionaires in Russia than you have in America. It's extraordinary the changes which happen by the day in, in Russia. Anyway, this is only through gas and oil. And gas and oil will not necessarily run out, but will become totally unnecessary. Unnecessary. You don't need gas or oil anymore. So what do the billionaires do for, for income? Well, they don't. They go on the street and play a tin whistle or something. It's all going to change. It's going to change drastically, totally. Bit by bit, not all overnight, bit by bit, but the changes are already here. America is beginning to understand what the, it is to live in the wilderness. This is the wilderness experience. And it will deepen and be more painful for a time. And then the world will change because you will do it. No, it's not Maitreya coming and doing it. You, Maitreya, will speak, will call on the God which we all are intrinsically to create the conditions of life which allows life to proceed logically, rationally, sanely. We are living in an insane kind of inferno without, without understanding what is making us do these things. And Maitreya comes to bring his sanity to bear and to evoke from humanity the sanity, their own well-being, their own best interests and their own highest thoughts and aspirations into their lives. And so Maitreya will call on people to open the doors, open the storehouses, feed the hungry. There will be a great, tremendous help, period of help for the starving millions, the, the dependent developing countries in the world.